further ado, I want to introduce Christopher Baker, who's one of our senior consultants who's been working with React for the last four years. Today, he's going to give us a brief overview of optimizing React's performance, views, memo, and use callback hooks. As Chase had said, I will be resuming our series on React hooks today with uh, uh, the part four, memoization for fun and performance. Before I get too far into it, though, I kind of want to cover what is memoization. There's a number of academic definitions. I've included the one from Wikipedia that seems to cover it pretty well without too much detail. Basically, memoization is a way to cache the result of a function call so that, if, especially for particularly expensive functions, if you call it with the same argument, you get the same result later. Instead of recalculating it, it just uses the cache result. So sorry about that. Uh, one of the ways that the memoization options provided by React differs from some other memoization options is that the, the ones provided in React only cache the most recent call. So if you call the function with the same arguments as you did the previous time, then you get the same result, the cache result. If you call with a new one, with new arguments, then the old result is destroyed and it recalculates it. But if you call it again with the old arguments, it does have to recalculate again. It doesn't cache every output, it only caches the most recent. One other thing I wanted to sort of mention before we get too far into the weeds is sort of a general process in, in application development that I've adopted and that I found in a number of other places is make it work, make it right, make it fast. Specifically, what we're talking about today, memoization, optimization, these are all part of the make it fast step. So these are strictly for optimization. They're not meant for, you know, you shouldn't be doing them on day one probably. There may be exceptions where you just have to work with a particular library, but for the most part, your code should work without using any of these techniques. These techniques just make it better, faster specifically. Um, so there are three ways to handle memoization in React. I'm sort of directly covering two of them, and then the third will be mentioned and explained when we get there. So the first one is use memo, which as I described before, is specifically used to cache expensive calculations. We have use callback, which is kind of a special case of use memo. Uh, it's used to maintain referential equality on functions specifically. I'll explain a little more what that exactly means when we get to that. So for use memo, we have some expensive function. In this case, it's just first name plus last name, which isn't particularly expensive. I do have a real example, but it takes up a bit more space. So I kind of want to explain the general idea first. So we're going to wrap it in use memo. We, we pass a function to use memo. And that function will be invoked immediately to get the, the initial value. So the, the use memo function is invoked synchronously, which may be, which is different from like use effect and uh, some of the other hooks. Um, one of the things we have to do though when we call use memo is we have to tell React what our dependencies are. In this case, we're depending on the values of first name and last name. So if those values change, that's the only time this function will re-render. If first name and last name are the same, it won't re-render, it'll just use that same cache value. So pretty simple and straightforward. Um, it's not simple, I guess, but pretty straightforward. Um, but as I said, this isn't a very good use case, so I do have a real one. So the sort of, the scenario here is we have some JavaScript object and we need to present it to the user in a nice visible way that doesn't have brackets all over it, so we can't just use json.stringify. So instead, what we wanna do is put each key on a line and then put the, the value after it if it's just a, a single value or if it's a nested object we want to indent and then put the key values there. So with the, with the recursion and the looping, this could get particularly expensive, lots of string concatenation, especially if we have some big JSON blob that we have to parse beforehand. So what I've done is I've taken the parse and the flatten, wrapped them in use memo, and declared big JSON blob as my callback, or as my, sorry, as my dependencies. But that's really all we have to do is take that value, wrap it in use memo, and then use it in React however we want. Um, so as I said, I could take the data and, and the flatten out and just say, you know, const data equals parse, and then const lines equals flatten, and that would work exactly the same way. It would just have to do that calculation every single render instead of being able to cache the value for, for speed. The other one I wanted to discuss was use callback. Couple things before we dive in too deeply. We need to talk about what pure components are. So pure components is a way to, but, well, the default behavior in React 
is if a function, if a function's parent re-renders, or if a component's parent re-renders, so does that component. It re-renders every component every time from wherever you make your change to that point down the tree. Because it's using, um, it's not directly necessarily modifying the DOM every time. There's not a particularly, this is a fairly fast operation, which is why they don't worry about trying to have automatic optimization every time. But sometimes you do have components that need that, need that extra optimization is a pretty simple to add. So this is where the third kind of memoization comes in. We have react.pure component if you're using a class component. So instead of extending react.component, it's react.pure component. Um, for those of you who are, well, this, the basic idea is what this does is this function will only re-render if its props change. Um, for those of you who are a little more into React, what this does is it provides a default value for the component should update function, which loops through the props and makes sure the new props are the same as the old props and will only update if they differ. The other one we have is react.memo. Uh, you give it a function component and it will only render this function if the props change. So in this case, if name changes, it will render. If name's the same, it won't. One note with both of these is that the prop comparison is shallow. So the official recommendation is to only use these for props with simple, or for components with simple props. So if one of your values is an object, it's gonna just check the equality of the object. So you may get some false positives. Um, and if you're mutating things, which you shouldn't, but if you are, you're also gonna get some false negatives where the object is the same even though the values have changed, but because it's only a shallow comparison, it is or isn't doing what you expect it to do. So now that we know what a pure component is, that's pretty much the only use case for use callback is when we have, if we have thing, in this case, a pure component, it takes an on-click handler. What it's doing with that is less important. If the on-click handler is specified in line with an arrow function, you'll get a new value every render, which means thing will have to redo every render and you've completely invalidated it being a pure component. So this gives you a way to create a callback and specify you know, when it will change, in this case, the first or last changes. But, so I guess this isn't a great example because it returns, which doesn't make sense, but it's a basic example. I do have a real one, or a more real one as well. Um, it, it caches the, the function itself. So unlike use memo, use callback does not immediately evoke it. It handle click returns the function. And when you call handle click, that's when you get the indication. So it caches that function so that you get the same exact value passed in. Unless those values change, then you get a new function. That's what I mean by referential identity is that the function used every time is the exact same function until you've necessitated a change. So handler gets memoized with use callback instead of use memo. That second argument is exactly the same. They said the only difference here is the function is not invoked. The function itself is cached as opposed to use memo where the return value of the function is cached. Pass that on to thing, but thing gets the exact same one every time. Reference equality has been maintained because thing will only re-render when the function actually changes because first or last changed. I do have a bit of a pop quiz. Audience participation is necessary, so somebody's gonna have to speak up. We have a click handler, handles click, passes it into the div, the on click for a div. We wanna make that better for some reason. Probably not a good reason here, but you know, we're gonna try it anyway. So we're gonna pass that function into use callback and then pass the handle click on. Um, I didn't mention this before, but that second argument in this case is an empty array. What that means is use the same function forever, don't ever recalculate it. It's not depending on anything. We just want to make sure we have the same function every time. There are a couple of other ways to get this sort of behavior. You could use ref, you could use state, but this is sort of, this is the built-in way to do that. So I would say use callback if it makes sense. So my question for you is which of these two is more performant? It's a trick question. You wouldn't be asking if it, if, if it didn't have a tricky answer. Probably. All right, I'll take a stab at this. So it feels like in the second example, there's no benefit to making the memoized version because I'm not 100% sure of the reason, but it, feel, it feels like it's just doing more work without any potential benefit in this particular example. In this case, that is correct. As Adam pointed out, it is a trick question. Gotcha. Um, the reason 
this is not the, the, the simple reason why there's no benefit here is because div is not a pure component. The, the, uh, the native components, div, et cetera, are, they render every time like the default behavior of, of any other component. So memoizing that handle click doesn't change anything. The reason I'm using this as the example instead of one where it's actually useful is because this is far more common. So I see a lot of places where people memoize their callbacks for no point as opposed to doing it when they should. And if you memoize it in this case, it actually hurts your performance. So this is the original memoized click handler. All I've done here is rewritten it a little bit so that the handle click is on it. The function is on its own variable, which is passed into use callback, perfectly valid. And then we pass the output of use callback in. But if you compare that with our original example, the only thing we've done, the handle click is still has that function still has to be created every render. So we haven't, we don't actually save on the, the function allocation. We just save in that we disregard it, except there's nothing to disregard. The on click is still going to run every time. So the only thing we've changed here is that we're calling use callback. We have to do the, Dependency check, which in this case is an empty array, so it's probably a little bit faster. But we have to do the dependency check. We have to use, call, use callback every time for no gain, which means we're doing extra work. We're gaining nothing. It's actually less performant than the original. Alternatively, if we were passing it into something that is memoized, it can make a difference. So in this case, because we're using thing instead of div and thing is memoized, um, there can be some, some some dependencies there that, that matter. In this particular example, it's still just the div with an on click, so it doesn't make a big difference. It doesn't make a difference there. But showing a full example that demonstrates an actual need for use callback takes quite a bit of space. Um, it has there's it happens, it's just pretty rare, but more often than not, you don't need it. So uh, before I completely wrap up, I wanted to mention a couple resources, and these are in the the slides are available. I think they'll be posted to the... Uh, we'll have a, a forum thread um, at forums.batovi.com uh, where all of the speakers will post their links. So people will be able to find the resources there. And also, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find it links in the description. There you go. Um, so you can, these, the full slides are available. Um, the first one I wanted to call out is Ken C. Dodds on Use Memo and Use Callback. Specifically, the article is on when not to use use memo and when not to use use callback, because that's far more important to understand why you don't want them sometimes. The official docs on use memo and use callback are pretty good. They're very short, but the information is very compact. So it is worth giving a read if, if anything is unclear. And then we have our Bitobi talks on YouTube. So we've got three in the React playlist, now four after this is uploaded. As always, we have our React Consulting, which is available if, if you need any consulting. We have a couple free services as well as paid services. We are at your disposal. And then lastly, I wanted to call out the Batovi community Slack. Um, we have a React channel specifically that we've been trying to turn into, well, the whole thing we're trying to turn into a community. On the React channel, we're trying to po uh, post relevant news, post questions to the community to sort of build some discussion around it why you do things one way or the other when there isn't necessarily the right answer. Also, if anybody has any specific questions, they can post there and a number of us monitor that to, to answer those questions. So wanted to direct your attention there to the Batovi community Slack, specifically the React channel, but you should check out the rest as well. Any questions? I think you said that use memo is only, only keeps the last result. Yes. Is there anything that can keep multiple? Like a, but used as like an LRU or something? Not that I'm aware of built into React. Of course, you can use any, any other memoization library as long as you're probably connecting to React's use state to trigger the actual update. But as far as, sorry, as, far as built in, I'm not aware of any that do that. I'll ask a quick question. How does the dependency tracking work? How, how does it know when it needs to uh, when it needs to not cache the value and give you something different? So the short answer is that React is magic and handles these kinds of things for you. Uh, a little bit longer is that whenever you use one of the built-in React hooks, like use callback or use memo, use effect, it knows the order you've called them in and what component you're calling them for. 
So it's able to maintain a sort of context for each one independently. So if two functions use use memo, or you call the same component twice, which is of course calling the same use memo with the same function, it knows that those are happening at a different point in the render process. So they, they're able to track their information separately, kind of like the context. And that goes back to something you guys have talked about before where you can't have like conditionally calling uh, hooks. Correct. This is the reason why you can't conditionally call hooks. You need to put all of your hooks pretty much at the top. If you're going to return for an error, return a different thing, you need to put those after all of your hook calls because that interferes with the order that React is checking. Um, if you're concerned about that, or you should probably do this anyway, but specifically if you're concerned about that, there are some ESLint rules you can enable. Um, I believe they're on by default if you're using Create React App, but they're pretty easy to add on your own. That one of the things they check for is to make sure that you're not calling anything conditionally that all of your hooks run every time. Uh, another important one they check for is the dependency list on the relevant hooks. If you're using a variable inside the function but you don't declare it as a dependency, it alerts you to say, hey, you know, we should be tracking that. And vice versa, if you declare a dependency but you don't actually use it, it calls that out because then you're getting presumably unnecessary renders. So it's a very handy. Um, if you search ESLint React hooks, it should come up. I don't remember the exact name of the plugin. And if you're using Create React App, recent, a modern version, it should automatically help.